movements for posterity. Well, your mom called me today. We'll get into that later. My mom called you? Yes, this, this, like an hour ago before I left and she called me and I was like, I'll reveal everything later. But she called me, so you have every right and freedom to dance and be yourself. All right. I'm, I'm just trying to put on this act with a serious filmmaker. Please allow me to continue. It's taken me a lot to kind of try and break the shackles of all the things I've done in the past. Well, I would say it's a little too late. Okay. We all know that. You know the. All right. Anyways, let's just start off with like, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here, um, giving us your couple of hours to us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, one, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring Karan here in front of all of you and to this part of the world, uh, even though he's really famous, is simply because I felt like, uh, and I've always been interested in this idea of collages, of uh, different ideas, different continents, different genders, coming together and creating new narratives, new stories. And um, with my recent collection that I just did, you know, I was like talking about this idea of in culture, we constantly hear East meets West, right? We are constantly told that that's the idea, and we are all very thrilled that's the thing. But I think it's about time the West met the East. Yeah. Because I think the, what is happening in the East is undeniable, okay? What we've created, um, what we've done there, the impact culturally, spiritually, everything there. And I felt like, you know, the right, the perfect person to talk about this and more is you. Simply because with the recent, with your films, you've always done it. With the recent film, Rocky or Rani Ki which we all know, you know, there's this, the obvious thing about the film is the unabashed joy that's there, the glamour, the beauty of it all. But the way you have nuanced and, you know, um, address every issue that is out there in the zeitgeist without hammering down, right? You've done it so beautifully and in this time, in this culture where we are figuring out who we are, where we come from, how do we, um, you know, appreciate or embrace the culture, you've done, you've shown us so beautifully, not just about, um, let's say, you know, woke uh, issues, but about people of certain age falling in love, patriarchy, what does a man look like? What do they, I mean, all this stuff. So, but before I make start, let me just say congratulations on 25 years. Okay. Uh, 25 years of mine and ours, a collective joy, youth, hope, desires, and you'd also made us, you know, the idea of falling in love has to be a current joy film, so it's a high standard, you know, so you've so you said. So let's start with this. How do you feel? Let's just start with that. <laughs> oh my God. Um, it's very tough. Firstly, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Gold House. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for this absolutely infectious energy with the crowd today. Thank you. Um, this means a lot. Like, and keep that going, please. Because you know, that's, what, that's what all artists really feed off uh, from. How do I feel? Um, <clears throat> Um, the thing is that there was a seven year gap. You know, the, film, the, the film I directed last was in 2016 called Um This was seven years too late, according to me. 
Um, but there was the pandemic, and um, also the last three years, personally for me, were very difficult. Um, there was just a lot happening. Um, there was a lot of hate, there was a lot of social media, there was just a lot of like, um, there was just a lot that was happening around me that had actually created this ball of anxiety within me, which I, I think, uh, realized only before the release of this film. Somehow I felt like, even though I've been in the business 25 years, I felt like I was seeking validation. I think that I felt like if, I, if this film would fail, um, it would really, really break my heart. And I feel we should not put so much emphasis on success and failure. But this particular time, I felt like I needed that from the audiences, from my fraternity, just because I felt like I was second guessing myself. I got like what every creative artist gets bouts of, but I had a deep level of insecurity, whether I was still relevant, whether the things people were writing about me were true. Of course, you could say that social media sometimes is faceless, nameless, and pointless, but they do exist. They do say the meanest and the dumbest things, and like you've got to read those things, and it's not easy, you know. So I went through that bout of anxiety and insecurity, and the night before the film, I think I just stared at my wall, and I just kept saying, "Oh my God, let just let tomorrow just go really well, please." Whichever powers there are, I spoke to my father who was passed away 18 years ago, and he's pretty much, I always believe when you lose a parent, you gain a god. Um, he's the one force that I talk to. And um, I just like, prayed very hard, and I went out to sleep all of, for all of one hour. Um, because, you know, even though I popped a pill to sleep, but it didn't work. Um, in the morning, I woke up, and like I didn't know what to do. I was pacing up and down, and then I went to the office. and. Um, the reviews started coming in, actually, in the morning. And, uh, you know, when I started reading some of the reviews, I was like, this man doesn't like anything. How has he liked my film? <laughs> and then there was another person who's not liking you know, anything. And I was like, oh my god, like, is something wrong with the film? Why are people liking it? Like, why are the critics liking it? I'm not used to critics liking my movies. Like, you know, they've never really loved my movies, you know? Um, and I'm like, one minute, is the film not going to do well because the critics are going to like it? I was like, really confused. Um, you know, so then the laugh started pouring in and eventually on that Monday, I was giving an interview to Anupama Chopra um, and she asked me a question and I found myself getting so teary while I was answering it. Because I realized that all that anxiety has started coming out through emotions. And then for that week, I was an emotional wreck. Anyone who called me and messaged me, I was just weeping. What did she ask you? Um, she just said, what do you feel like you asked me? And, um, I actually, had you asked me that question on the weekend of the release, I would have probably burst out crying in front of you as well. Um, I've become like this like emotional wreck, all for the good reason, like I was really like, you know, and, and my kids were like, they were, and my kids really don't know what I do, I think they're very confused. Um, you know, because they suddenly, they just told me when they saw Coffee with Karan, and they were like, it's very boring, you're just talking. And you know, I was like, okay, so my mom said, you want to show them the movie and I'm like no you know and the last thing I want is them saying that this is boring and we're hoping up so when I, do, I went and hugged them and I was like you know Dada made a hit film you know they were like yeah but like you didn't get us what we wanted you know they wanted something like you know they wanted to go and see Barbie and I was like I was trying to explain to them that the movie is not for them but would you like to see my movie and they were like no we want to see Barbie and I was like okay so it was like, it was a fun time at home, but it felt good. I mean, the validation came in and I can breathe. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're breathing. Um, you know, as you suggest, <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing for us collectively, now, all my, a few of my friends, all of us, we went to see the film, and over the period of a few weeks, we've been talking about it. Like, it just hit the nerve. I don't know what it was, right? But, so let's go back to how did this idea came out? Like it came about, like and how what you, what made you think about? It? Just give us. I know you've told me, but I, I want them to hear. It. Um, the thing is, I was making a film called Takht, and the pandemic, starring. the starring it had Ranveer Singh and Vicky Kaushal and Karina Kapoor and Alia Bhatt and Bhumi Padmanabhan and Anil Kapoor and Janvi Kapoor and uh, pretty much it was a mega mega like period uh, historical period film. Then the pandemic hit us, and it just didn't seem like you know it was practical to make the film at that time. And then I was just at home for three months and just pacing up and down. I remember there was an incident that happened in my 
in my family where a member of my family actually had um, dementia and he had gone back into his past love. Only thing is he was a married man and he kept taking the name of this one lady who happened to be his family member as well. Um, and he just said his name and it was and he, it was a scandal. And then, then the truth came out that he was actually having an affair. And, uh, and, and he, it was only the only relationship that he was talking about at age 80. And, and the lady he was having an affair with was 84 at that time. And his wife was 79. And there was drama happening in and around this situation. And my father had to fly down, uh, my mother had to fly down. I'm not telling you whose side of the family this was. Because, uh, <laughs> you don't want to I might not get into trouble. But there was a lot of drama. And I remember, I was, instead of feeling like terrible about what was happening, between these three people at, at an average age of 82, um, I was like, wow, like this is great. And wait, 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 just for, just for context, my is, for me, I'm so obsessed with infidelity. Um, because I made a movie on it, and I remember someone telling me, why have you made a film on infidelity? Why are you endorsing infidelity? I'm like, dude, it's, you can't endorse something that's already sold out. Um, <laughs> But just emotionally speaking, I'm always um, intrigued by the idea um, of infidelity and you know how it can be a reality. But when it happens, and you know, and, and that's why there's no age for love, right? Yeah, of course. And, of course. Um, and I believe that you know very strongly that became the germ of the story. God, when, um, what for context? What around what year was this when you heard the story? When I, no, when, when, this, I this, when I was 15 years old. Oh my God! So you have stated it, this story. Yeah, but like it just popped up in my head one day when I was talking like to my mom, and I was like, I just need a trigger thought, you know, that to start the story. And that's why it was Dharam G's and Shabana G's uh, track yeah. that actually began Rock Your Rani, and then it became about. And I was always uh, wanting to address patriarchy, um, but done through a film that okay. was, you know, entertaining. And then somewhere down the line. I was a lot on Instagram, and I would see West Delhi Instagrammers who are also massively popular as influencers, and they had just the one most wonderful way of speaking. Like, I used to love it when they used to say, I'm X, Y, Z, this side. And I used to always say that, what happens if you come to my side? <laughs> like, will you change? Like, you know, and I used to get abused by the, just the, the way they used to speak. So, then I created, I think, Rocky Randhala, yeah. and then we had a writers, yeah. we had Shashank Ketan and Sumit Roy and, yeah. and Ishita Moitra, right, you know, yeah. Rocky Rani Kibrim Khan eventually, and, and just things just happened organically, like that trigger became the love story, yeah. and then that led to the love story of Rocky Rani, and then, you know, I just decided to call it, and I called up Ranveer and Alia, and I was like, what okay, yeah. uh, <clears throat> we got into a conference call, and I was like, I'm writing a love story, and this is called Rocky Rani Kibrim Kani, and and then I asked Ranveer, what, what do you have to say? He said, you had me at hello, like, I'm wow. on. Wow. Wow. That, that's that's, on. that's and fate. I, and yeah. Alia was like, I mean, why are you even asking me? We're doing this, just tell us when. And I was like, okay, let me write the film. And I wrote it, and uh, it just turned out to be fun. And, and, and it, yeah, I don't know what else to say. That's I mean, what that, I mean. That's what I mean. The very fact that they even agreed to this day and age, you know, like they said they trusted you with it. That says a lot. I mean, that is, I suppose the, I suppose that's the, the leverage of working in the movies for 25 years. Right? <laughs> and, and like, you can, you can sometimes take people for granted, you know, in terms of, and I can take, you know, some artists, you know, been in my life, of course. in the zone that, you know, that, Worked hard enough for 25 years. Of course, uh, uh, some people may not agree, uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it has not been an easy journey. It's we won't not. go. We won't go there. But let's go to this thing idea of like this is a love story, right? We would we've watched so many love stories in, in the films, and rarely have I seen a film that besides the joy and the glamour and beauty that it touched touched the nerves, right? You know, there's so many moments in that film that um, like you know we like. Either we cried or we held back our tears, but we felt something. We felt alive. So let's talk about the patriarchy aspect of it. What made you think about including that? Have you been through that? Can can you just take us back to your childhood? Like you as a kid, let's say 12 years old or 15 years old, give us a scenario. Let's go back there. <coughs> the patriarchy. I'm channeling Sumi, just to let you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
and uh, that's fine. Uh, and she was very much a big inspiration for me. Same, same. I, same. I started Coffee with Karan with the Simi is the OG as well. Same, same, same. Uh, she is in love with um, She does that. And uh, she looks amazing even today. Yeah. Uh, more than the pictures, I was raised by very, very progressive parents. Okay. My father and mother, and I was the only child, um, there was like, it was strange because I was never like all the other boys, you know, at that time. I grew up in the 80s. Um, I was different. Um, I was different from everyone else. I was, I was, I was effeminate. Um, I was also plus size, uh, which in those days we call fat. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, I was also effeminate. And there was a word that in the 80s people didn't call you the things that they call you today. They, there was a word called pansy. And that used to like, um, that kind of followed me everywhere. Yeah. But at home, even though I was unusual and different from the boys, like I was that boy that no one wanted to take in any sports team. Like, you know, if you played football, I would wait right to the end and they'd be like, who's gonna take Karan? Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, you were like baggage for either team. And even when you tried to play football, they would never allow the ball to come to you because you, they'd know that you'd mess it up. Yeah. So even if you tried to be included, you couldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, you tried to belong, but you couldn't. Yeah. And then at home, I was dancing to Hindi from songs in the confines of my room. Um, by I, myself. By myself. And my father once saw me dance to Dafli Wale, the song from Sargam. Yeah. And he was like, you dance so well, come and show my friends. And I was like, that was great because he never thought that his, his 10 year old son was dancing to Jaya Prada's parts yeah. of Dafli Wale, um, Lata Ji's parts of Dafli Wale is, is unusual. Yeah. And he never, maybe he didn't know better. And my mother never said anything. And I just was raised very differently. And I realized at that point, ki ka gender you know? And I feel like, uh, it, it, I felt like if I was, I was, if someone called, it, it was not my parents or my family. I was raised by my mother and her sisters and they were all very progressive women. Mm -hmm. uh, that made me, a feminist, mm -hmm. you know, and I knew yeah, exactly yeah. what my personal politics were, even at that age. Mm -hmm. But it's the people around Prabhupada that are not kind to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I started doing public speaking, the man who taught me, he said, you have an ex extremely feminine voice, and it's not going to be easy for you in the real world. So he made me do voice exercise to get baritone. Oh, oh, wow. And then he, his wife would, like, at that time, teach me how to walk, because he, she said, you don't walk like a man. Yeah. Now, these are things that I would not ever tell my children today, of course. But they mattered then yes. to those people, and maybe at that time to me as well. Yeah. Today, my children are allowed to do anything, of be course. anyone, because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm already combating, like, the help at home to say that, you know, when they say things like, please don't cry like a, like a girl to yeah. Yash, yeah. my son. And I'm like, no, they can both cry. They must both wear pink or blue. It doesn't matter. Yeah. This stereotyping is what I hate. Of course. But as a child, I've been through that. You know, I've been made to feel awkward and unusual till I found my feet, mm -hmm. you know, in cinema. And at that point in time, I realized that, you know, I'm going to be who I am. I'm not going to be apologetic about who I am. And I'm certainly not going to lie about who I am. Yeah. When was that particular, do you remember that particular moment when you had a kind of like a, you know, revelation or felt like, you know what, I'm different and I'm going to do things that is different and right for me. Do you, do you re recall that? Or? You know, it was more than when I'm, strangely, it wasn't when I was growing up in school or college that I had that feeling. It was when I started working in the movies. And I think the films just bring all kinds of people together. Mm -hmm. And even then, when people didn't know better, I just found myself being accepted. Like, I remember my first meeting with Shah Rukh Khan. Mm -hmm. um, it was crazy because the King, the King Khan. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember um, I was an assistant on the Wale Dhanan Ajayi, and I told him that um, I was like, "Oh, you know, you're wearing Wrangler jeans. You should wear Levi's jeans. They just fit you better." You um, said that to, to him. And I, he, just I mean, he, at me. he was already a star. Yeah, you know? star. I don't know what gave me that what entitlement I had. And I just said, you know, because I had a friend in college called Simin, and she said Shah Rukh has the best. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, the band Levi's jeans, yeah. you know? And then I said, oh, you have an Adam's apple, you must open your shirt two, three buttons. Yeah, I remember he said, said, yes, I remember he said So he just yes. kept nodding and he called, he said, will you give me a moment, can you call Adi in? 
and I, go, and I went outside and I thought I'd said very regular normal yeah. things. He said, he gone here. He can't say it. And he said, why are you wearing this kind of jeans? And he said, why are you talking about Adam's apple? So, uh, so all are, so it's Bombay, for who, everyone knows Bombay, there are two parts of Bombay, there's South Bombay, who, who are called townies, and then there's, of course, the so, North of Bombay. Yeah. So Adi told him, Adi, he's a townie, yeah. they all talk like this. So, like, <laughs> so I was like, I was not, I was being very genuine yeah. in my ability for him. So then he, eventually Shalu started finding amusement in all these things that I was saying, you know, because I, he was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to do it, I want to be a designer. I want to be a, oh, I want to be the future Prabhat Gurang. You know? oh. <laughs> That was my big dream because that's what I thought I would do. But what I was trying to say is that Shahrukh and Adi were so amazing in the way they encouraged me. Mm -hmm. Not once did they make me feel different. Yeah. Not once yeah. did they say anything about how I was. <clears throat> they found something in me as that, that, and it's because of them that I'm a filmmaker today. I, my, my parents didn't want me to make movies. They were both very hard. Boys would tell us. My, my mother, because my father had given six films that had failed. Okay. Um, we had some loans to pay. My father had a small import-export business that we were relying on to pay, you know, all the losses for the okay. films. Okay. Even the year of Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, my father released a film called Duplicate, which bombed. Yeah. It was May 7th, and it released and it bombed. And my mother told me, you know, this film industry is not stable and you should not do this, you should get a regular job that gives you a salary and that gives you comfort because I don't think you're cut out for the movies. My father told me your temperament doesn't belong to the movie industry at all. Oh, wow. He was like, you know, you're too soft for the movies. At one point though, my father, I have to say was, you know, Punjabi dance can be diluted. Like at, at 15, he told me, beta, you're so good looking. To, uh, you know, you just have some puppy fat. And, <laughs> Puppy fat will go away, you can become a hero. And, and my mother nearly choked on her side bhaji. She was in the India. She choked on it and she just looked at me, kept going like that, you know. Like, don't know. And he was like, What do you mean? Like, everybody says my son is so good looking. Puppy fat is chala jayega. Then the next day he woke me up and he said, Why don't you go horse riding? Uh, because all actors those days would learn horse riding. And I was just imagining myself on a horse at Juno Beach and my mother was just shattered. And then she said, then I'll, I'll contact Tinu Varma, he was an action director. And you know, you learn action. And I was like, me? I was like, what is he even saying? And my father was that man, like he was so obsessed with me. He thought, first he thought that I was like the best looking man on planet Earth. And every time I'd go to a party and I would talk, you know, there would be, I was kind of popular with like, I had a sense of humor, so girls would laugh, you know, not because of any other reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, but my father would say, I was like, I was like, Papa, no, no, are their friends? And I was just talking, so he really wanted me to be an actor. And when I said that, no, it's not for me, then he said, then you can't enter the industry because you're not cut out otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so then finally, it was because of Adi and Shahrukh that, you know, they finally told my father that, look, your son is, is talented and he should be a director. And they were not happy. The morning of Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, the morning of the shoot, 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 at 5.30 in the morning, my mother woke me up. And I was like, I got shocked with that. I was like, what happened? My, my first thing is like, are you okay? Is dad okay? You know? She was like, no, no, I just want to tell you that you don't have to do this. <laughs> she says, you know, do you know where to put the camera? So I was like, I think so. So she says, even now, I'll call Adi, let him direct the movie. You don't do this. Don't worry about anything. We'll just fly you off somewhere. And I was like, she wanted just me to leave the nation and not write that film. But I don't know that she was she just worried. Yeah, yeah. She was just worried. And yeah. I remember the moment when Kuch Kuch Hota Hai was ready and there was, we were in a preview theater. It was called Dimple Preview Theater in Bandra. And there was my mom, my dad, Adi, uh, me, and Shahrukh. And the movie was, was shown. And at the end, and we didn't stop for interval, I still remember. And at the end of the film, um, I walked towards my parents and my father's body was like trembling and my mother was weeping and we gave each other a hug and I think for one hour we kind of cried again mm -hmm. because we are a crying family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we cry a lot 
And then Adi and Shahrukh came and said, one second, did you like the film? Is that <laughs> It was just, my mother couldn't believe it. Like she couldn't, my dad couldn't believe it. And then of course, he did him because he thought I was the best looking man. Mm -hmm. Now he thought I was Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and it was so embarrassing because everywhere I would go, my son is the best director in the world. And I'm like, and I'm like Papa, you can't say that. You know? But he was just that man, like, you know. What I'm trying to tell you is that I had such a functional childhood, mm -hmm. and it was the inside, point, inside. But yes. it was the outside that was not functional at all. It was sometimes, and I always feel like, please don't seek your validation from others. Mm -hmm. Had I done that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been where I was today. Yeah. You know, and my parents, I give all credit to. Um, they really, really made me feel like I was just like anyone else, which I wasn't at that time. Mm -hmm. And to Shahrukh and Adi were the two pillars. Uh, who made me feel like I could be a filmmaker. I feel like, I feel like destiny is such a huge part and, but so are they, like, you know, they are responsible for everything, like everything. And I always tell them that I would wipe the studios clean for them, both their individual studios because of what they've done for me. Yeah, wow. And I'm only there because of them. I mean, that's really, like, you know, incredible. Yeah. I mean, um, there's no denying that, of course, it's human nature, but you know, um, I think oftentimes creative people, really insightful people, are instinctive. And I think they clearly saw something in you, right? And that's why they believed in the idea that you could be a storyteller. You know, that, and oftentimes, the storytellers are healers. You know, so you've healed us through your story so many times. So thank you for that, you know? Um, so let's go, I mean, there's so many things I want to talk about. Because I, Privately, we talk, I and mean, he tells the stories like incredible. I would say, I tell this to my family all the time, you're one of the best storytellers like, ever. When you, I'm just curious as a, a creative person, do you narrate a script or do you give it to them or how do you do that? Okay, let's go back to Kushka Shodai. Okay. Ah, uh, I, I don't know if anyone will believe this, but I have never written a word on a page or a computer ever for any film that I've written. <laughs> I just write them in my head and then I narrate it. So, um, well, wait, wait, well, what do you, what, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I'm so I don't, I have a, I, I have a, a notepad. In those days there were notepads and pens <laughs> and computers. I used to have that pen but I never wrote a, a line. I would just think so you it just in your, I would just think it in my head. Yeah. And um, with Kuch Kuch Otai, I had two story ideas which I merged and made into one film eventually. And um, when I came back and um, I called Shahrukh and Kajal and I narrated the film to them, like, and immediately, like, you know, like, I was narrating it, like, for dear life. Um, and at the end of the day, they were both, like, Kajal had tears in eyes, Shahrukh was just looking at me, like, okay, so this is a love story, and where do we start? That was not the funny part of my narration. The funny part was when I had to narrate to Salman Khan. So, yes, you told me this. so, that, so I had gone to every lead actor to kind of go do the Salman part. Yeah. Like I'd gone to every lead actress to do the Rani. Rani, spot, yes. Rani, everyone had said no to me. Yeah, I said, had said no. I mean, it started no. with, uh, uh, I think, the, Tina's niece is in the audience. Naomi's here, I think, somewhere. Uh, Tina was the first uh, uh, girl. I wrote the Twin character. Tina, by Tina. Twin, 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 Twin girl. Uh, so I wrote the name as Tina. The character is Tina because I love Tina and I have childhood friends and I absolutely love her. And I wrote it and then she was like, you know, I don't feel the part. And then of course I went to several other actresses. There were eight of them. Many, many, many. Everyone who was working in the movies that time, they all said no to me. And I was like, I may have to wear a short skirt and do it myself. <laughs> because like, well, your father thought you. No, nobody. Like, yeah. yes, uh, ironically, Aditya Chopra calls me and says, have you seen this uh, film uh, called Raja Ki Yai Ki Barat? And there's a girl, Rani Mukherjee, you should meet her. Uh, so I went to her place and I opened the door and I could see her and I looked down and she was there. And I was like, uh, and I'm like, I am not high shaming her, but this is like how it was then. And I was like, oh God, she is going to be like the college bomb. Like, you know? So you, you didn't think she would? No, I was some worried because I narrated the film and then she also said, I'll take a day. And I was like, no, nobody's doing my film. Then she called me and she said, how will you convince an audience that Shahrukh loves me over Kajal? Because Kajal and he were Dilwale to And I was like, just, and by that time, you know, I didn't want to tell her, look, I don't have a choice, just please don't. <laughs> uh, but I gave her some director spiel, but I have to tell you, she, 
the first day of filming, and I knew at that moment that the star was born, and I'll tell you what happened. There was, we were shooting the song Koi Mil Gaya. Yeah. Uh, Koi Mil Gaya. Yeah. So there was Shah Rukh Khan and Rani. Now, be be before you, sorry, 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 before you did, how did you, from Raja Kya Ki Bharat and her transformation of like, you know, this like, college bomb, like, how did that want to get that fashion aspect of it all? There was nothing we could have done, Prabhal. We had no one who was doing the film. <laughs> so we had, Rani was a beautiful girl. And she was stunning. And, and, and I was like, no matter what, we have to just do this. I spoke to Manish. Marutra, yeah. and I was like, we've got to do this. Um, and we worked very hard. Like, on, and she just, and you know something about Rani, I have to say, is that she transforms just completely. Like there's a Rani Mukherjee you see off camera, and there's a Rani Mukherjee on camera, and they're totally two different solid forces. Um, the first day, she is the only one who rehearsed the song, Koi Mil Gaya. Shah Rukh and Kajan were doing like their usual They were like yeah, yeah, yeah. They came, Farah Khan was the director of choreography. We are shooting, and the first was the hook step that Koi Mil Gaya that step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were doing that as a wide shot, and the shot was away, over, Kajal and Shah Rukh looked at Rani, and Kajal said, you're doing something wrong. You know, to Rani. To Rani. Okay. From the mic. Farah Khan said, she is the only one doing it right. You <laughs> all are all doing rubbish. One and, and in that moment, a star and her confidence was born. Oh, wow. Because I felt after that, like Rani Mukherjee was just seamless. Oh, wow. yeah. That was just amazing. And I feel Farah doesn't realize what she did to her morale and confidence. At that time, I realized like, wow, because she was, and then Shah Rukh and Kajal both went to Rani and said, okay, show us how you do this thing. Because they were doing it wrong, you know, because they were doing it like And they were like, they were very really too cool for school at that time. But like, Rani had lost, and she's a great dancer. Which Salman, I remember I had gone, so the thing is, I had even gone to a lead actor called Chandra Chur Singh. And yes. I yes. so, 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 so he was he had done a great football matches and you know. Yes. So I went and that time I was a South Bombay boy, I lived in Malabar Hill and uh, um, and he called I called him and he said I live in seven bungalows. Um, so I said, That's great, but which one do you live in? <laughs> I did not know it was a locality. Uh, he said, no, I live in seven bungalows. And I was like, my head was saying, what a show off. Like, I'm like, yes, but sir, which one is yours? And then I went and I narrated the film with the same amount of enthusiasm that I had. Yeah. Then he said, okay, I'll let you know tomorrow. And it was very far, seven bungalows. You know, it was two hours away. Uh, the next day he said, okay, I'm ready, come and meet me. And I drove again in a taxi all the way. And he said, I don't want to do the film. And I'm like, why didn't you just tell me on the phone? Did he give you a reason why he doesn't want to? It was just no, like, I was just used to being rejected. So it was like, <laughs> then I went to a couple of other actors, Seth and everyone. Everyone said no. And like, I was at a very depressed at Chunky Pandey's party. <laughs> His daughter is also here in the house. Mm -hmm. Right, so okay. Where's Raisa? She's very shy. She's got a man. It's dark, so no one will spot her, don't worry. Um, I was at Chunky's house, and Chunky and Bhavna, they are friends, and there was a party, and I'm standing, and Salman came up to me. And he, he knew my dad, and yeah, you know, he knew her. Your he dad was, was like, universally loved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he was like, uh, I heard you've been shopping. So I said, uh, shopping? He said, yeah, you go on your role, no one's doing it. So, Salman said that. Yeah, so and he was like, you know what? It, you need to be really confident to do that part. And I, so why don't you come and donate it to me tomorrow? Oh, wow. So I was like, oh wow, like okay, this is an opportunity. So he said, I'm shooting for Chapyar Kisi Se Hota Hai, uh, Ramesh Torani's film. Come to 9 a.m. shift. I reached at like 8.45 and uh, Ramesh Torani looked at me and he said, are you crazy? He's not coming before two. Like, so I was like, okay, like, that's fine, I'll wait. Like, I, I'll do what it takes. And then I waited the whole day. 9 p.m. at night, he said, come home now. And narrated. So you did the whole day? Yeah, I was there, which is fine because listen, yeah, yeah. I would have waited there a week, a month, whatever. <laughs> then I went and I narrated the first half to him. And I narrated and he heard me. And at an interval he said, I'm on. So I was like, uh, but without his. Okay, yeah, but I said, but you come in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's like, I know what's going to happen. I just wanted to hear you narrate a film. I, I, and then I kept thinking, I hope he doesn't think it's Charles part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on, and he, it was just like that. I said, you're doing this film? He said, yes, I'm on. I love your dad, and I think you're passionate, and I'm doing this film. Wow. And I walked out, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you were doing this movie? Yeah. Like, how is this even happening?
happening? Like, you know, I felt like Beyonce, like DL, Destiny's Child. Like, it was like, like, how is this even happening? And it happened. He was amazing. I mean, and at heart. He, and you know, the first day, so sorry. even the first, no, forget, yes. the first day of shoot, I remember we had to shoot Sajan Ji Dharai, yes. his introduction. Mm -hmm. And he was wearing these torn jeans and a black t shirt. And we had made a suit for him. And uh, I was very scared of Salman. I still had a little bit. And I, he knows that. And he, you know, he makes a lot of fun of that, but like, I have a lot of love for him as well, but at that moment, he wanted to go up on set and say, you know what, no dulhas ever want torn jeans, it'll become a trend. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, okay, and then I started feeling like my blood pressure rising. <laughs> and at one point, I was like, you know, but the set is very grand and Tarshan's wearing this huge lenga, patchwork lenga, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, but I'm gonna do this in a t-shirt, go Sajan Ji Karai in a t-shirt. And I was like, no, 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 and finally I burst out crying. <laughs> and in front of him, and he was like, one minute, stop crying, just stop crying. I, I was like, please wear the suit, it's my first film, like I made up for the suit. And he was like, okay, I wear the suit, just stop crying. And I was like, I'm like, okay, this did the trick. Like, you know, like, I was like, okay, when in doubt, just cry. And, and, and that evening, Shahru came on set, and he was like, how embarrassing. He says, how can you cry like this? I was like, he wanted to wear torn jeans and a t-shirt. I, I was mortified, but like, he was so sweet throughout the film. Like, he was just amazing. Like, he was there in the film for 11 days, and those 11 days, he was just magical. And let's not forget, that's the only film that I think is worth of the award. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Good on you. Good for you. Good on him. And, I, and, and let's just leave and then hats off to him for knowing that, the incentive. I mean, you know, you hear, oftentimes you hear about the industry, like, you know, from outside, like it's competitive and everything. You can hear all these horror stories, but you, one of the reasons I wanted you to tell these stories to everyone is there's a camaraderie, there's a love, and you know, through, um, over the period of time, just like having access to that world and seeing so much love and support there, I think those are the stories that often don't get tell, not told, you know, so thanks for sharing that. Um, all right, so what else do you want to tell us about Kuch Kuch Hotai? Because I want to move on to... <laughs> Kuch Kuch Hotai was everything was great about it. Um, Abiding the fact that when the film released, uh, there was a lot of uh, underworld threats at that time. The industry was going through. Um, Kuch Kuch Hotai. Yeah, so it was... Now I can look back with it with some humor. At that time it wasn't funny at all. Yes, yeah. um, so we were having a premiere on Thursday, the 15th of October, okay. and on Monday, I had gone down, you know, we lived in an apartment building, and I had gone down to drop my aunt. Um, I was wearing a red t-shirt, and my mother got a call, you know, it was one of those, it was those moments that a lot of members of the industry were getting calls, and, you know, and my mother got a call, and they said, your son's wearing a red t-shirt, and we have a gun on him, and we'll show uh, if you, if you don't stop your release for some reason, whatever, we don't know why. Um, my mother, mortified, horrified, I've come up and she's just held me and thrown me into the bedroom and locked me in. And I'm like, like those, I'm like those old people, I'm like, my mother, 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 my don't have Karan outside, you know, have him inside. Okay. And Shah Rukh came and he was like, no one's gonna shoot you, I'm standing right in front of you. <laughs> and I was like, he said, this is your moment, this is what you will, you will, you will, you will enjoy this moment, I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. I'm standing right there in front of you. And he stood for 20 minutes, but then after that, my father was so happy, got me, so I didn't really see the film with my industry. And that night we had to flee, literally flee, uh, to London. And my mother was just paranoid that time because she kept thinking people were following us all through London. Mm -hmm. So every time we walk, even she just keep turning around, you know, and like looking like, and I was like, Mama, nobody's here, you know. Then she kept saying, this man is staring at us. I can see, I said, he's selling shawarmas. He's not staring at us. <laughs> and like, he's just, he's just he's looking up and saying, she's just, then after three days, we thought we should go and see the film. Uh -huh. And secretly, I think my mom was like, didn't want the success or the, for the not film. for, she just wanted her son safe. Right, yeah, sure. So we went to see the film, and it was at Marble Arch, and it was those days there was one large screen just like this, and there were 500 people and watching it. And at the interval, those days they broke for interval, and 
300 of those people got up and ran out. And my mother said, I think they're not enjoying the movie, they're leaving. Somewhere I felt she said it with some joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my father said, no, no, why have they gone? And he went outside and he asked one of the ladies standing outside, and he said, why are you all out? And she said, because our mascara is running. Like, you know, like we were crying right through oh, that into wow. now. And my father said, ro re, ro re. <laughs> It was coming back home, felt like, oh my god, I can't believe what had happened. And then, you know, I started writing my second. And one morning I woke up and I looked at my dad and I said, I want to work with Mr. Bachchan, Mrs. Bachchan, and Shah Rukh Khan Kajal, Prithik Roshan, and Karina. This is the second film. Yeah. And my father looked at me thinking that, you know, Dore par jate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, you should make one film at a time. I said, no, they're all in one film. <laughs> And he was like, well, what is this film? I was like, it's a family, you know, and I want to go. And, and you know, Prabhupada, it was really lovely. I went to all the actors on one day. I went to Mr. Bachchan first, okay. out of seniority. Yeah. Um, and then I left his house. And, and he said yes or no? Yes, yes. He heard the outline and he said, of course, and he was on board. Yeah. I will always remember that moment. And I left the house and I dialed. Jayanti. Yeah. And she said, but you were just here, what happened? You know? She said, I said, I want to meet you now. You know, I didn't want her to believe that I came just to meet Mr. Bachchan. And uh, then her. I left the house, I drove around the block, I called her. <laughs> and, and I narrated the film to her and she was like, I can never say no to you. And I'm on. I went to meet Shah Rukh. He was shooting at Nebu Studios. Mm -hmm. He was like, why are you narrating the film to me? We're doing this, whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. I went to Kajal, she was at Film Islam. She got emotional, I got emotional, we cried again. We cried again. <laughs> um, then I went to meet Dugu, I called him uh, Ritik, and he was really, his first film hadn't released by the way at that time. Oh, okay. He hadn't had Kahona Pere, but I had a lot of faith in him. Yeah. Uh, he said yes, and my last meeting was with Karina Kapoor, and <laughs> it was at her house, Poo. Poo. Yeah. and she had no interest in the first half, because she wasn't in it. <laughs> uh, unlike Salman, who just heard the buzz, and she only wanted to know what happens to her. And I remember her looking at me and she says, this is going to be an iconic part. <laughs> I was like, uh, you know, you know, it's fine, let her say she's young, you know, yeah. maybe mildly delirious at this moment. But what she said was exactly what happened. No, no, but no, no, you forget, you've always said this to me. You saw her, you saw her on camera, and you knew that that was she. I actually stuff. saw her at the Bombay Times party, standing with her sister, giving that I give a damn look to everyone who came her way. And you know, and I was like, she's poo. Like, yeah. she's poo. Like, this is, you know, she's my Alicia Silverstone from yeah. yeah. Like, she's my poo. And when I met her, I realized that she, because she is obsessed with herself. No, 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 listen. There was going to be like, you know, the, um, I mean, in a healthy way. In a great way. Yeah. yeah like, I love, it. like, she's my most favorite person in the whole world. Oh, yeah, I know. Like, I love her to death. Like, literally, yeah, like, if somebody has asked me that which is the one person you'd want to be stranded on an island with, it'll be Karina Kapoor Khan. Like, no one but her. She's just the most entertaining human being I know. Like, even while shooting that scene, like, those scenes, like, she was just amazing. Like, she just, this part was made for her. Yeah. You know, she was poor, she was born to be poor, and literally 23 years later, people still yes. talk about her life, yes. like, you know, and like, literally we say to each other, like, you know, when I say, movie tonight, and she's like, tell me how it was. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is yeah. the way we speak yeah. to each other, it's hilarious, like, I, she's, she truly, what she said in the beginning is what happened, she, it was like, fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that movie was, I mean, it's such a big part of our, you know, like, our, collective, like, let's say, sadness, but also the wedding, Boli Julia, you know? So let's talk about the music aspect of your films. How do you, do you, how do you narrate to your music directors? What do you say to them? Here's a scenario, how do you know this is the right music? So I'm tone deaf, like, I can't sing to save my life. Like, I can't that, sing. That I know, that I'm yeah, fully aware. You can't yeah. see us, fully. Uh, but I have all just, I Just so that you know, he's tries, he always tries to hum, and I'm always the RSP star. Let, let me do the singing, and you do the dancing. <laughs> you, 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 you just made us sound like some bang of our like, Listen, if all fails, fashion film, we have started before that. Of course. Yeah. But I'm obsessed with 
the old illegal music. I grew up like just like you are. Yes, of I grew up. My mother used to listen to it on radio, and I grew up just listening to like Lata Ji and Kishore Dai and, and Mona Rafi and Asha Ji, and I'm obsessed with those songs. Yeah. So melody is like in my bloodstream. Uh, I just can't articulate that melody. I can't sing it, but I love music and I love Indian film music. Of course, of course. I don't listen to anything else. I don't know anything else about any other performing artist. If you if you ask me about Taylor Swift and you ask me about anybody, I won't know. I just swiftly move on from there. <laughs> I have nothing to say about like anyone. I, and not for any. I great reference for all the artists. No, I just don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen That's to my throwback yeah. music is only different music. Yeah. And I just listen to just that. I have that power. Which Sari Rama has made, which I, which, which I listen to all, all day, all night, and like that's my biggest inspiration. Somehow I think because of that, music just runs in my veins, and I'm able to kind of express that to the composers that I work with. Um, you know that song, I just wanted to, you've told me this story so many times about um, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, like, and, and you know the conversation with uh, Javi, 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 like, and the lyrics and all of that stuff. Would you tell them the story? Or can you tell that or not? Okay, right, okay, sorry guys. <laughs> okay, let's not, let's not, I did not land into trouble. Yeah. Sorry, I was supposed to be very, very kosher here. I just read up on I'm like, I'm like, thanks. <laughs> no, no, okay, okay, there's, nothing, there's nothing controversial about it. Javed Saab is, a, an, he's a legend. I mean, he's a legend. Is. And he's right. actually gone on record about it. Like, okay. he, so he basically, he was in agreement with the title. In, in case this becomes a controversy, in case I... I'm no, not it's not controversial. Javed Sam is family. So. Javed Sam and his entire family is family to me. So I, you know, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. worked with his, his wife and we all love each other. Yeah. Um, he had a problem with the title, Kuch Kuch Hota. Yeah. He was like, we had a creative disagreement. Yeah. Then. But, and he said, you know what, I, I don't feel like I can. It was very amicable. Yeah, yeah. And I said, but you know, I really wanted my desire is to work with you. And he said, we'll work another time. But when the film release, he called me and he said I was wrong. And really, like, I was yeah. wrong. And it takes a great man to say that. Absolutely. And I was, like, so, like, humbled. But we did my career's best album together, uh, Come On Now. Um, and, uh, I would say that music um, and those yes. words. And I remember Javid Saab wrote to that, what we call the Mukra, which is the, you know, the verse of the song. He just wrote it, like, well, well how does it go, like, um, uh, 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 like very quickly, and he wrote it, and I was like, wow. I was like, this is incredible. And that song became like such a song of hope. Yeah. So, and you know, uh, ironically, I lost my dad right after that film. And that song will always remind me of him. Wow. Okay. Um, all right. I want to move to slightly jump to Rocky Arani because you know, it's like fresh in our memories. And um, just tell us about the, I mean, I mean, what can you share like, that people haven't heard, that like, people haven't, um, like, tell us about the music, okay? Uh, let's talk about, and my favorite, I guess, the Jumka is great, all that. Me, personally, as a full-on masala film lover, Dindora, you know, is, I love that, you right? <laughs> all right, you, you know, just one if somebody asked me a question about Dindora, they said, you know, was that inspired by Sanjay Leela Bansali? And I was like, no, it wasn't, it was copied. <laughs> I was like, I, why I? I I'm a big Sanjay Bansali fan, yes. and I would say this is a homage. Yeah, yeah. So my brief to Amrita, who's one of the most incredible minds as a production designer, yeah. was let's go Bansali. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's do what yeah. he does best, and yeah. no one can touch him. Yeah. I can't, but I know I can emulate it, yeah. and that's what I did. So no. that song is a note to Sanjay Leela Bansali, and it was, and the Kathak was a very important part emotionally. Yes. Dola Re Dola, uh, the subversion of that moment with Ranveer and Total Roy Chaudhary dancing to Dola Re Dola was everything for me. Of course. Like, it was like exactly what I stand for. It's what I think about gender. It's what I think about music. It's what I think about inclusion. Yeah. It's what I think about independence. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel that moment, those two minutes of the film, is my personal politics into 100. Like, that's what I believe. 
Um, that was the most important part for me to get right. Um, and Ranveer and Tota rehearsed for months, months, because Katha, if you're not Katha trained, yeah. uh, it is a very difficult dance form. But it is also the only dance form that gives you so much poise, grace, and apart from, of course, the others, like yeah, yeah. Bharatnatyaka, no, they say, but Kathak is what also forms the base. If you can learn, if you can dance, if you can Kathak, if you're Kathak trained, you can dance in any yeah. other form. Like, I believe that. That's my personal, yeah. not that I'm, I'm a professional or anything. Um, well, um, you but, are. Um, but, you know. but for me, the music of that film, and, and everything about Rocky Rani was just that from the casting, like, I just know how much work Alia and Ranbir put into their respective parts. Ranbir actually spent over a month in Delhi meeting people, yes. getting the language yes. right, getting the, the accent right. Rani and uh, Alia and how she kind of trained in yes. Bengali. And, and Alia was like, I'm overtly opinionated. I want to make sure that I'm not not likable. Yeah, yeah. You know, I need to make myself likable. Yeah. And Ranbir was like, he had the part of love anyways. Yeah. But it was just like working with just watching these two magnificent artists perform. Mm -hmm. They raised the level of the narrative. Mm -hmm. of they made the scenes yeah. better. Yeah. They made the film better. Yeah. For that, I would be so grateful. Not just them, but all the collective actors. And yeah. they were, it was, so we took very long to make it because we had two lockdowns and yeah. the COVID waves and, you know, Ali got married and, yeah. you know, we had delays. But when I look back, I would always say that it was each memory. Working with Dharamji was just amazing. Like, he's 90 years old and the passion he has for facing the camera with, with a plumb. Like, I, I don't know, at 90, I'll probably be either dead or living <laughs> under an MRI or scan or just not be, I don't know. Or, has, or you'll be calling your own Rupa. Like or, you. I'll, <laughs> or I'll be like calling some <laughs> ex-love of my life. Uh, <laughs> no, but like, I just love the fact that he was so passionate at that age. And, and I'm like, you know, there is no end to your creativity. And, and he was like so worried about his angle and his close up, and I just <laughs> love that. I was like, he was like, you know, and I was so sh shy to go and ask him and Shabana Ji that they have a kiss. Oh, yes, oh my god, yes. Yeah. So let's talk about that. I was like, there was nothing to say. So when I looked at Dharam Ji, he said, kiss hai. So I said, ah. So he was like, ha, to theek hai, kya problem hai. So I was like, ha, ha. I was like, you know, it's like going to like a parent figure and say, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. so it was very, uh, and what is Shivana? She Shibana. was like, she says, darling, I'm an actor. Whatever the director wants, I will do it. Her, I you know? And I was like, she says, what do you need? And like that, I, I was like going, I was like literally shaking Shake, before uh -huh. like trying to tell them that this is the moment in the film. Uh, but it was such an integral moment Absolutely. and I needed for it to happen. It was seamless, it was beautiful and everyone clapped on set. Yeah, you know, it was oh like God. wonderful. Uh, and Abhinash Aujhodkar is just like uh, the epitome of beauty and romance. Yes. And like, I, 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 that and is one of my favorite is, yeah, beautiful. It, it just, it, when it says, it's yes. everything. I know. It's everything. Um, on that, like, what, what, what's your favorite song? If you were to think about it, uh, you know, like that really gets you. That uh, yeah. It's my go-to song for any emotion. Heartbreak, happiness, sadness, loneliness, emptiness. <laughs> That's not pain to you to open up my ears, okay? <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm quite a tragedy queen. I, to to I mean, all that drama in the movie, probably comes from somewhere. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's fully aware. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of drama. I mean, you, you have no idea I'm like, controlling myself from saying so many things, but I just want yes. to say yes. because, because we don't want to land in any trouble. No, you don't. Yeah. 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 You yeah. just need that white rose on your jacket. Yeah. Pristine and pure. Yeah. Very, very yeah. pristine. But, um, this such a little son called you, like, it's just a bit after seeing the film and everything. No. He's actually never called me up for any film. Um, but I have called him several times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Filmmakers very rarely have called me, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, this film, particularly, I got lots of calls. I was very grateful. Um, uh, Anurag Kashyap. Yeah. He said he saw the film twice, and I was like, oh my god, now what's wrong with this film? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Anurag Kashyap, I love. Yeah. But he just ruined my, my, my profession as an actor. Because yes. I, because I would have been like the very functional actor. Yes. Um, so, the Bombay is... Velvet just kind of sealed it for me. And like, I always tell him, I'm like, I never got one offer after that. Not one. I'm like, not even an offer that I could refuse. Like, I was waiting, thinking 
that there would be a line for acting offers after my glorious performance in Bombay Bombay. I got no acting offer. And I was just mortified. I was like, you know, this is, could have been a great alternate profession. And I'm still, I use every platform to say, please, if anyone's watching this, I'm really open to acting offers. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we do need someone to create a beautiful film, so we'll let you remain the director's seat. <laughs> Um, okay, so, <laughs> but if there's a filmmaker here who wants to make a glorious film with Karan as a lead, go for it. I did say I wanted to lead. I'm okay to play daddy. Daddy? I'm okay to play daddy. I'm not debuting. I know that I can't be lead. I would pay money Why to not? see me. Why not? No, no, no. I don't want to be lead. I don't want to watch that movie myself. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay playing. I'm okay with father roles. Okay, now talking about daddy and father right now. Um, <laughs> this audience has filthy This is, I'm too, uh, I'm too old to say who's your daddy. Now I am. <laughs> I was born in the fatherhood, Rob. You all like literally, like, I was just asking the question. All of a sudden, I hear Do you know a sexy daddy's called Sadie? I just think that. <laughs> Zaddy? I'm a wannabe Zaddy. <laughs> well, everyone, is he a Zaddy or not? <laughs> a validation like you never get anywhere else. <laughs> well, they're very kind. They don't know what else to oh, say. Oh, no, no, these are New Yorkers. They aren't kind. <laughs> they aren't kind. They are very straightforward. They speak the truth. So, you know, don't, don't think they're being polite or kind. They're not. All right, yeah. okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm available. <laughs>
to do with this child of mine? And she goes, and we won't get into the history of like an hour of phone calls. And she said, um, I mean, it really chokes me when, when, even if I'm, as I'm repeating it now, she said, I have never been more proud of him than ever. He's not only a great son, he's become an amazing, amazing father. He cares about them, he loves them, he's, he's an amazing friend and everything. But please make sure he wears something decent. <laughs> Literally, I'm not even, I was like, I was like getting really emotional, you know, and, and, and then she said that. Oh my God, I hope I've done her proud. I hope, like, this is the most decent I can be. <laughs> We've seen, you know, this, I, mean, we have, the most... I have like Falguni and Shane in the front row, and they know, and they, they got, uh, they've given me all the sequins in the world to wear, and I wear it proudly. <laughs> I, in fact, I already love what Falguni is wearing. I'm going to wear that. I know, so. I know, I know. <laughs> That's what I was about to say for, I mean, are we channeling your New York side here? You know, I'm going through a phase where I'm trying to be low key, it won't last very long. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I know, I know. Yeah, you it just won't last yeah, very long. Yeah. I'm trying to because I made Rocky or Rani Naka like I'm a filmmaker. I'll take me seriously. Yeah. That's my vibe. Yeah. You know, the thing. <laughs> but next you'll be seeing me on Chalak Dik Lajar dancing again. <laughs> which which there reminds me. Which there goes my filmmaker. Which reminds me that he, you were telling me the story about it. It wasn't Chalak Dik Lajar with uh, Madhuri yeah. when you started dancing. <laughs> I mean, I had guts. I had little to guts to dance in front of Madhuri Dixit and pretend like no one's watching. Like, I'm you like, see like Madhuri just stopped dancing at the point and because I just started pirouetting on that stage. And I was like, this is like, you know, something like, you know, they say in a Mata I was like, what the hell just happened to me? And then when I see that clip on YouTube, please don't. Uh, <laughs> but I was so embarrassed. And I be. was like, how dare I dance in front of Madhuri Dixit? But that's who I am. That's why I think we all should be like uh, dancing. Yes. Otherwise, what? Absolutely. Not worrying about what the world says, but just listen to your heart. You know, you must you must listen to the world when they are genuinely critiquing you. But when they're just leaving. does the world generally critique you? Ever? Some, I mean, there are some. There are maybe some people who do have valid criticism, and one should read everything. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, like, do what you're meant to do. Yeah. Do it to your best. Do it with integrity and honesty and sincerity in your home. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I mean. When I was watching Rocky or uh, Rani and you know that dance between when we were in total, like you know that particular moment was very much what I've seen with you also, right? You dance abandon, with such abandon, and um, whenever I've seen you before the film, like in, in in real life at weddings and everything, I always love it because you have, you are unapologetically yourself, and showing up unapologetically yourself in full glory and being yourself is the biggest resistance to people who don't see us. You know what I mean? And so that's what you've done. Constantly and consistently. And even with this film, even with this film, that particular moment, I can't even tell you when that dollar to dollar happened and all that stuff happened. It was such an out-of-body experience, so not just for me, for so many of us, we felt seen. So thank you for that. Really, thank you for that. Really. Yeah. Because that, that balance of entertainment and of messaging is a very, very tricky one to find. And you've been able to do that. Um, how did you even think that before we get into other stuff, did you even think that while you were making a film, this, that's where it was leading to, or not? I didn't know anything. I just wanted to make an entertaining film. Yeah. And all the messaging in the film is in my yes. thought process. It's in my DNA. It's in you, my you ideology. It, yeah. And I, I feel like that came in through organically. <laughs> and it wasn't designing to make a message-based film. The messaging was, was very much part of the narrative. And like I didn't want to do anything that was like screaming it out loud. Yeah. Uh, there are films that are very heavy on message and they make sure that they say it out loud. Yeah. I just wanted to be part of the character's journeys. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like I, I'm just like very thrilled and very overwhelmed with the reaction to so many parts of the film that came so easily to all of us as artists on the film. Yeah. So now, uh, so what's next for you? Like, um, you can talk about the next film or not really? <laughs> uh, I, I listen. I had to try. I'm yeah. writing. I'm writing. I'm writing. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can say right now. I'm just shuffling between a couple of ideas. Okay. I do want to get back on the set to next year. I, I promised okay. myself that I would be on, on a film set next year. I wouldn't take a long gap. Yes. Um, I just want to make a lot of movies now because I realize that you know these gaps are not good for me. Um, I feel like these are my, my, I'm 51 already, 
And um, you know, I want to make films till you know sanity supports me, and uh, until I can like take make films that make sense, uh, you know, because then there will come a time where I will become mad and <laughs> start you know, and start making strange films. And, um, um, hit or flop, secondary, but I don't want to make a film that doesn't have my core beating heart. Yeah. and my core beating head. Uh, so I'm like, that's why I want to make many, many more movies. I want to dabble in genres. Um, you know, I don't want to just make love stories. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, I just, because uh, the irony is that I have, don't have one in my life, so I'm going to stop making them. <laughs> 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 it's uh, not yeah, it We live vicariously in the cinema. Uh, I do want to dabble in genres. Like, I'd like to make, like, an action film, perhaps. Action film. Yeah. And, like, I'd like to you know. I mean, that would be amazing. And I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte once told me that I have a lot of repressed anger. <laughs> and, and he said that if you make an action film, you'll make a really good action film because all your anger, your anger, it will all like, come out like, like burst like a fountain on celluloid. Yeah, that's amazing. We look forward to that. And, um, you know, as a friend to you, as a, you know admirer of your work, and like, just a consumer of your kind of films and stories and all this stuff, I always feel like, you know, some of my friends, we've talked about it, it's like, I mean, I hope there's one day that you decide to do a crossover film, right? And where the, the West and the East, you know, there's this glorious musical that you make, the only way you can make, because oftentimes the stories from me from here, you know, doesn't land. So would you ever consider, like, making a film that you know, crosses over a musical? You know, I'll be honest when I say that um, I feel like uh, you can't plan one. I think it has to happen. Uh, I think when you design a film that you feel like, oh, I'm going to make a film that will go international, it never does. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think the team at RRR, you know, knew that the, what was awaiting. Mm -hmm. I don't think Lagan knew they were going to be an Oscar nominated film. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can't plan this. You can make a film with all the ingredients that you believe in. And if it has the right platform, finds the right resonance, luckily for us, streaming services are take our films to all over the world. And if that happens, I'm very happy to accept global love. Yeah. But till then, I would want to make Hindi language films that I grew up on, I believe in, yeah. and I hope that eventually they touch hearts across the world. And of course, yes. <laughs> not to say that the aspiration doesn't exist. I have my Oscar speech ready. <laughs> speech, who knows if I ever make it to, I, 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 maybe I'll just get invited but never nominated, but like, uh, I, I, I do have that speech ready. Yeah, we but like to hear it right and now. You never know, know my speech? No. <laughs> Manifest it. <laughs> no, but I have it. Yeah, trust me. I know. Trust me. You don't have to convince me, I know it. Before even I asked, I knew you had it. Yes. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but I still don't know how to design that film, uh, which is like something that can work for a market that is other than mine. Uh, I, I'm only going to make films that I know will first work domestically. Yes. And then with the, and the diaspora, who I love, by the way, all of you have been. Um, I mean, I, I stand very tall and proud as a filmmaker because of the diaspora love that I received through my career, from the very first film, right up to Rocky Rani. You know, there's been abundant love that has come from across the world with Asian audiences watching the films. Um, and who knows, maybe one day I will make my uh, crazy rich Indians. Let's set a date. Let's set a date. Let's set a time. Let's just do it. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like things that I plan never happen. Mm -hmm. But unplanned things That's are true. the best. I was blind, but like, after that it happened, Rocky Rani happened, so who knows? No, no, that's true, that is true. All right. Oh, um, dear. Yeah. We have a rapid fire, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have to say, I mean, you know, I, mean, I think everyone's a bit familiar with that. You know, <laughs> historically, rapid fire has you know, been very tricky. So I wanted to keep it very, how's it, kosher? PG-13. Yeah, PG, basically. Yes, exactly. So, here we go, all right? We ready? Yeah. All right. If it's too bland, don't blame me again. Um, all right. Your favorite actor, Hollywood, Bollywood, male, female. Uh, Hollywood and Bollywood? Yeah, both. Like, uh, male, and 
Direkt, det samlade bara ut. Direkt kommer en skidering. Hola, skidering. En del av dem. Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep. Actor, actresses you want to go on a date with, not necessarily love, but or, or it could be that you, you know, you fantasize about this date. <laughs> not, you know, I have no fantasy about any artist in what I would tell you, but I have no interest. Who are they? I have no, no, I don't. When you know them so closely, you don't want to go to date with them. And because you love them and you want them to hang out on your date. Karina Kapoor Khan, not for a date, but just to hang out. Mm. All right. If you were to make Rocky a run in Hollywood, who would play Rocky and Ryan? Ryan Gosling was so good in Barbie. Uh, I think he'd be great. Who? Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Yes, yes, yes. And I think Jennifer Lawrence would be a great Rani. Oh, wow. oh, nice, nice, actually. Yeah. An old film you want to make, remake, Hollywood or Bollywood, and who would you cast? Uh, old film. I want to make Titanic. <laughs> Hindi version. Of course. And who would be to? We've had many national uh, natural disasters. We have <laughs> had pick one. <laughs> and have two people madly trying to combat circumstances. Like, give us the name, just for the thrill of it. Who would you cast? I do. And don't say Alia. <laughs> no, I love her. But you Ranbir know. and Deepika. Oh. Oh, nice. nice. I like that. All right, director you admire in this filmography, you are like, you know, let's say it. Respect and envious of Sanjay Lila with Sadi Zoya. Oh, nice, nice. Boxer of Briefs. The mid, the ones that are not loose as boxers, but are like boxers, but like. Like chemise, a slip? It's not a slip. It's like Cameron trying to extend, they're like the size of a boxer, but they're all fitting. True. What do you call them? I have no idea what you're wearing. I don't know who's seeing this. I don't know who. Oh, it's not been more seeing it, uh, but I, I, I'll show it to you. <laughs> no, I said I showed you. Like I don't have to show it on me. I can show it to you in person. The box. I'll show it to you at Bloomingdale. Yes. Okay, that is okay. No, we, we've landed in Bloomingdale. So yes. Okay. Um, okay, which Bollywood actor has a crossover potential? Um, obviously, DC is. I'm scared after that question of boxes and beams and which Bollywood actor. Wait, which Bollywood actor looks best in brief for boxes? I mean, everyone knows John That's true. I mean, that's a, yes, we could have a whole conversation about that. You know? All right, but. In terms of crossover potential, besides PC, Priyanka Chopra, who's done an incredible job, yes. you know, we love her. Um, which other Bollywood actor do you think has a cross crossover potential? And which Hollywood actor has a crossover potential to end this film? I mean, let's all just act where we're acting, right? I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I was like, why? If you have great talent, why should they go? I think. Uh, why not? I, I, I know why. Let them do what they're doing. They're great. And what they're doing. They're great at what they're doing in Hollywood. They're great at what they're doing. And if you cross over and can manage working in both industries, yeah. as great like Priyanka has done, yeah. it's fantastic. She's, you know, she's working in both industries. Why are you crossing over? Why can't you just be an artist and act everywhere? Woo! But here's the thing though, the, isn't the, uh, what do you call the yearning, um, the very fact of being an artist is you want to, you know, you're curious, you want to constantly travel, your mind, yourself, your, you know, how to say, that's why. I mean, it's great, you must travel, um, and, there are, and there are planes for that, um, but like, you can work everywhere, and, 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 and you know, this is, like literally, like I want to continuously, as I said, make films for my audiences back home, and yeah. then I hope that that film, like I'm going for Absolutely. example, yeah. for yeah. example, yeah. I went to Melbourne, you know, after Rocky Rani. I'm going to Busan with Rocky Rani. Um, you know, I'm traveling with the film, and it's 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 already happening. Um, you know, kind of we're, we're touching lives with the film across the world. I don't want to go and settle down anywhere else. Yeah, but yeah for sure. Per bit in Hindustan. I hope that goes viral. Um, billion dollars at the box office or an Oscar award for best director. I knew I'd get you. Oh no. Oh no. Would I be? But would I have no money if I had the Oscar? Because no, no. You already have money. 
<laughs> but I also do you know all the Balenciaga, no, so Gucci, you need to buy. Like, I never work for money. I really don't. I would love the Oscar. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Because um, I don't have my speech ready. <laughs> um, all right. I asked you about the song. Okay. What's the song that touches you? Is, is that La Jaga for everything? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Then I'm all right. Um, what's your, what are you most proud of? My decision to be a parent. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, is there, you know, is there like less mantra in your life? Is there any? Uh, what is my mantra? Is, um, this is a work mantra. Uh, delegate and then trust, or don't delegate. Um, what would you tell that young boy dancing alone in front of the mirror behind a closed door now? What would you say to him? Don't stop dancing. Woo! Don't stop dancing because an audience awaits you eventually. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. That deserves a bigger round of applause. What do you want your legacy to be? He came, he endured, he conquered. <laughs> Great, amazing. It would be nice if he said he came, he endured, he conquered, he came. <laughs> <laughs> Catholic school for 10 years um, and where I was constantly believed and you know, all that. 
that stuff happened, and I never got validation. At that time, it was painful, but in hindsight, it freed me. They freed me because when you don't know what what it is to get validation, you no longer need it. So when you don't need validation, you can be truly yourself. So I would say I navigate just being myself. Like in a really, sometimes it can come across like as when Julia, my dear friend, says, "Oh, you can be a bitchy," you know, or, or or sometimes it can be friendly, but I'm just authentically myself. Can we also take a beat to, to celebrate Prabal Gurung? Not easy to break through in 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 a country that like the United States of America. Make a brand for yourself, create a legacy, and be a bona fide like like bona fide artist with his expertise and supreme talent. And he has broken through not just because of destiny, but also because of all the hard work that he put into building brand Prabal Guram. It is so amazing, and he's such an inspiration to so many. Indians and Asians across the world.